So what is a salivary gland stone? A salivary gland stone is essentially an accumulation of hard minerals such as calcium that will accumulate within the duct or the actual gland that makes saliva. What causes salivary gland stones? Well, really nothing in particular causes salivary gland stones. Within saliva, the body naturally has hard minerals such as calcium, phosphate, and magnesium. And these elements can be attracted to each other in some patients more so than others. When they combine, they form what we call a stone. And that is really what causes, if you will, a salivary gland stone. What are the symptoms of a salivary gland stone? Probably the most common symptom I hear is pain associated with meals. Next, I will hear of a swelling associated with meals. Those combined are almost diagnostic of a salivary gland stone. Swelling and pain associated with meals. So how is a salivary gland stone diagnosed? For the most part, it's from a good history and physical exam. But sometimes the physical exam is not enough. And then we go to imaging. And the most common imaging we'll use is either ultrasound or a non-contrast CT scan. Do salivary gland stones need to be removed? Well, that's a strong word, need. If you have a salivary gland stone and it's causing you pain, uh, acute or recurrent infections, or the worst situation, which is an abscess, then yes, that stone needs to be removed. However, there are many stones that lie dormant and really cause no symptoms whatsoever. So in that sense, that doesn't need to be removed, although I would recommend it be removed. Can a blocked salivary gland go away on its own? I get asked that question a lot. Sometimes it can. In those situations, when the stone is small enough and the patient is able to produce enough saliva to push the stone through the duct and out into the mouth, yes, it can relieve itself. How do you get rid of salivary gland stones? Very good question. If the stones are small, we'll first try and use what we call sialagogues. Sialagogues are substances that we put in our mouth that make the body produce saliva. The concept here is trying to wash the system clean. However, sometimes the stones are just too big. And in that situation, trying to wash the ducts clean is not going to work. And there we use something called silendoscopy. A small camera is inserted into the duct, we find the actual stone, grab it with the basket, and pull it back out of the natural opening, thus relieving the obstruction and removing the stone at the same time. Where do salivary stones come out when they do come out? Well, they always come out in your mouth. However, depending upon which salivary gland has the stone, it'll come out in a different location. If the stone were in the submandibular gland, the stone would come out from underneath the tongue. However, if the stone is in the parotid area, it will come out sort of in the, the buccal area or the cheek of your mouth. How long do salivary gland stones last? That is a huge range. It can be from days to decades. It's gonna differ from person to person. I've had patients that have had stones that have been there for over 20 years. And then I've had some that have accumulated over simply a few months. So there's no exact number on that. That's gonna be patient specific and the range is wide. How common are salivary gland stones? Well, I really don't know. It's very difficult to ascertain. Why? Because many of them go undiagnosed. What I will tell you is it's not uncommon. If you talk to any dentist or oral surgeon or ear, nose and throat doctor, they will routinely see patients throughout the year with salivary gland stones. However, if you were at a dinner party and you ask somebody, hey, have you ever heard of a salivary gland stone? It might get kind of quiet. What is a blocked salivary gland? Well, it's a salivary gland that's blocked. I mean, it's kind of all in the name, right? But essentially, your salivary gland produces saliva, saliva flows through a duct, and if something blocks the flow of that saliva, that would constitute a blocked salivary gland. How long does it take to recover after a salivary gland surgery? Well, salivary gland surgery is outpatient, so you don't stay in a hospital. You eat regular food the same night of surgery, and you're pretty much doing normal things. 
But how long it takes you to fully recover has a lot to do with what type of procedure you have. If you have what's called an open procedure, which would involve an external incision somewhere and the gland removed, that's probably about a two week recovery. But if you have an endoscopic procedure using small cameras, that's more like a two hour recovery. What are the symptoms of salivary gland cancer? Well, early salivary gland cancer usually has no symptoms. However, late salivary gland cancer generally has multiple symptoms. One is usually some sort of hard, fixed mass that's either located under the jaw or in front of the ear. Two, it's painful. Three, you may either see involuntary facial movements like twitching or the inability to move a part of your face, which is frank paralysis. And sometimes in a real advanced case, you'll actually see the overlying skin ulcerate and break through. So these are probably the symptoms of salivary gland cancer. What are the symptoms of a salivary gland tumor? Well, usually not very many. For the most part, depending upon which salivary gland you're talking about, most of the tumors are benign. In the parotid area, which is in this location in front of your ear, 80% of those tumors will be benign. In the submandibular gland area, 50% will be benign. These tumors generally don't have a lot of symptoms. They don't cause pain, they don't cause paralysis, they don't cause anything really other than an unsightly growth. Now, if the tumor is a malignant tumor, then that's very different. That can cause facial paralysis, it can certainly cause pain, it can absolutely cause ulceration of the skin, and is usually associated with a very firm mass. Is salivary gland cancer curable? Well, early salivary gland cancer is definitely curable. The key is early detection and diagnosis. Late salivary gland cancer can also be curable, but the rates are significantly lower. So if there's any questions about a mass or any type of growth in the salivary gland, go see someone early and get it evaluated.